In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect Azure Databricks to an Azure Data Lake storage account in Gen 2 without Unity Catalog and with a storage access key. So what we're doing is we've got Azure Databricks here. We're going to use an access key and we're going to gain access to a folder in a container in an Azure Data Lake storage Gen 2 account, which is really just Azure Blob Storage with a hierarchical namespace. So assuming you build your Azure Blob Storage account with a hierarchical namespace and you've used storage accounts before in other ways, you should be able to use this video and connect Databricks to it. So our steps are, we're going to get the access key for the Blob Storage account. We're going to use the REST API to save the access key. Before we do that, we need to make sure we have a bear token. And I'll explain how to get the bear token. And then we're going to retrieve the access key in the notebook that we're trying to use, set some variables to get our folder paths and things straight. Then we're going to mount the ADLS storage account into a mounted drive in Databricks, and then we're going to work with the data. So now that you know that, let me switch over to here. So the way access tokens work is in Databricks, if you click on your username and you go to settings and you click developer, right here you see access tokens. And if you manage it, you can create a new token. And this is a an API access token that you use in order to be able to use the Databricks API as if it were you. So assuming you have the correct permissions, when you go to create a new token, this token will let you interact with the API as if it were you. So that token's a big long string. And what you do with that string is when you're in Postman or whatever you're doing, um, when you have a container here at the top, you can click on authorization and underneath authorization there will be a drop down list that will say bearer and you take that token and you put it under the bear portion of the authorization part right here and when you do it on a container in postman all of the calls underneath it inherit that bearer token so you don't have to do it for each individual call then the, the once you've done that now you can use the api so the api i'm using is my workspace name Right? This is the workspace that I created for Azure Databricks. And the API is API 2.0 secret scopes create. What I'm doing is I'm creating a secret scope to save an access key in just a second. So the scope that I want to create is called local. And if I go to create it right now, it says, hey, it already existed because I already ran it. Right, But when I ran it without it existing, it gave me a 200 and it succeeded. Then underneath secrets, so now what I'm doing, now that I've got a scope, and I've got a bear token for authorization. I take the same workspace name, API 2.0 secrets put. And what I'm putting here is um, the access key for the storage account that I want to gain access to. So if I go back to Databricks, excuse me, and I go to my storage account. So this is my storage account. And if I go under access keys, there's an access key here that I'm not going to show you. But if I show it and I save it, then I go back to Postman, I take that access key and I save it here. And I can name the key whatever I want. Notice the, the scope is what I named earlier, local, and I can name the key whatever I want. I put the access key here and I save it. That already that was already saved. Now that's in a local secrets container in Databricks and I don't have to have that access key in my notebook code, which is a bad practice. You want to avoid doing that. So once you do that, now if I open up my blob storage demo here, um, I just want to show you a few things. If I go to my storage browser, this is my storage account. I have a container called data, and then I have a folder in that container called small test with a bunch of PDFs and with what you can see here is, do, 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 do. can I, you show me? No, you're not going to show me? This is a CSV. I don't know why it's not letting me expand, but here's a CSV right here. Okay, there it is. You can see it, CSV. So this is, I'm mounting a mount point, so I use MNT as the, as the path, and then the container name is data, and the folder name, half of the container name, is called small test. The storage account is veracity data. The storage container is called data, just, just like the mount point up here. And then the key, what I'm going to get a get, the secret, what scope, and the name that you saw me name earlier when I used the API. So those are the names I just used earlier. Now I'm going to set a path. Um, this is the WASB path here. 
and I'm going to set some configuration settings for the storage path and the storage key. And then once I do that, I'm going to mount it. So I say, okay, mount that path that I had earlier. The mount point is the mount point. That's that MNT data as the container. Um, and then the extra configs is the storage path storage key. Um, now that's mounted, and it's mounted as MNT data. So what I can do with that, in this case, I just want all the CSVs. So I use spark.read, and um, I load off the input directory that we had up here, right, which is the mount point and the small test, right? And um, just give me all the CSVs. So once I use that and I display it, you can see that this is a list of, this is the contents of that CSV that was in that folder. So um, you can see that it loaded the data frame just fine. And, and this is, these steps are working, right? I actually connected that ADLS Gen 2 account to, um, to Databricks. Uh, and I can also just do a straight, you know, directory listing, right? So if I just a file listing with the input and, and print it, then you can see when I run it, you can see the PDFs here, but you can also see the CSV. So you can see the entire contents of the list. So I can run regular database, regular file system commands. I can load up a CSV in a data frame. I can do anything that I want. I'm not using Unity Catalog. And that is the, the these are the full steps that it takes to mount an ADLS Gen 2 account with Azure Databricks. I found that documentation a little bit lacking, and I hope this video gets you on your way. Thanks. Have a great day.